So Night of Champions is a Sunday, and if I'm being quite honest, I don't know if I particularly care all that much. And I'm probably not the only one. Now, for me, granted, that may be due in large part to the NFL season being underway and fantasy football and DraftKings and all of that jazz, what have you. Um, but I just heading into Sunday, I don't even know if I'm going to watch the show live Sunday night or do it maybe um, Monday morning when I'm off work. I haven't really decided yet. That's probably what's going to happen. So if you're wondering when a Night of Champions review will be coming, it'll be coming. It would probably be sometime Monday morning, late, or into the afternoon. Uh, now with that said, I don't want to totally make this a poon on WWE session because honestly, they've at least bothered to put together seven matches on the card. They're actually all announced before the show. Maybe they have room to throw something else in there. Maybe they don't. I don't know. Um, but I look at it, you know, Night of Champions means every title is defended and every title is being defended. And they've given me a world title match that I really do care about. It just, I just don't care that much overall about the product right now. I just don't care that much overall about the show heading into it. It's not necessarily a reflection of if I think the WWE did well or did poorly in terms of the build-up to Night of Champions following up on SummerSlam. It just kind of is what it is. Uh, so in terms of this show, you got a six-man tag on the kickoff that I don't care about and I know I most certainly won't watch, even if I come back and watch this stuff the next day. Uh, Dolph Ziggler versus Rusev I do not care about um, because you know everything that's been built up in this is supposed to have at some point in time led to some type of match between Summer Rae and Lana. Whether that's one-on-one, -on -one, whether that's mixed tag, whatever. And I know what people are going to say about the whole Lana got hurt and all of this jazz and all that, and that's fine, terrific, believe whatever you want. But it seems like the whole time, as much as they've interjected Summer Rae and Lana into the fold, is that it's always been they've just been building towards matches between Dolph Ziggler and Rusev. Which, if that's been the point the entire time, then why in the hell are they even bothering doing this? It is ultimately just a waste of time. Now, sure, some of you will get your circle jerks off to seeing Dolph Ziggler wrestle, and surely it will be one of the best matches of the night because Dolph Ziggler is awesome. But the, the match itself won't, I'm sure, be bad. It just, I don't care. And I don't really see why any of you should care either. And no, Dolph Ziggler, your boy being in it, is not good enough reason to really care. If the story is stupid or the purpose of the match is stupid, then that kind of makes it stupid as a whole. Then you've got the kind of family matters, as I say, six-man tag. And now, damn it, Ambrose and Reigns, you're teasing me with the great Kali or Savio Vega. You better not mention them unless you're going to bring them in. And if we're going to make this a family matters feud, then let's bring in Steve Urkel or Stefan Urkel if we need to, whatever the fuck the case might be. Now, a lot of the mystery around this match is... You know, I'm sure not so much just what Braun Strowman is actually going to do, but who's going to be the mystery partner for Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns? I believe I've been on record already saying I believe it to be Kane. I think it to be Kane. While from a storyline standpoint, it would make sense to have it be Eric Rowan, who would be a great chance to reintroduce Kane as that masked monster. No bullshit, no corporate BS. You know, a guy that you could utilize in a part-time role and still get something out of him. That's what they need to do. This would be the perfect opportunity, the perfect place, the perfect time, the perfect spot to bring back Kane, and that would be what I fully expect them to do. Now, they could go in a different direction and go down the Randy Orton route. Again, like I said, they could go down in a different direction and go with somebody like an Eric Rowan, although I thought Eric Rowan was hurt. I'd anticipate it to be Kane, and I think it works if it's Kane in terms of who should win this match. Uh, you know, if you're going to have that big freaking surprise then you've got to have this team win. You've got to have Ambrose Reigns and their mystery partner win because it just seems to be the right thing to do. Um, now we get to the actual title matches themselves. The IC title match between Ryback and Kevin Owens. I actually do care about this. I wish someone had kind of thrown this in at the last minute. Um, so I hope that they're going to continue this along and they're going to give us something out of this because you do have the principal elements there to get something out of this. I won't say this is necessarily a program that's going to be a license for money or anything, but it can at least be a program that can be interesting, and it's a program that can garner some type of positive attention, I would think. So hopefully in this match, uh, Ryback doesn't go over clean, and honestly at this point, I hope 
Kevin Owens doesn't go over clean. Let Kevin Owens do something Kevin Owens related, and then we move on to the next show next month. Um, and then we get to the Divas title, and let's hope for the merciful love of God, Nikki Bella has passed AJ Lee for the Divas Championship, longest reign. It's time to get it off of her. You know, Charlotte or Sasha Banks or whoever, it doesn't fucking matter. I know Charlotte gets the opportunity here. She's perfect because she's not Nikki Bella. Now, if the WWE really wanted to swerve us and really wanted to, you know, kind of sort of piss us off or we'll act like we're pissed, but we're not really because ultimately at the end of the day, it is diva shit and most of us will pretend like we get outraged about the divas not being treated well, but ultimately we'll do nothing about it and really frankly don't give a fuck. I fucking have Nikki Bella win this match. Fuck yeah. The closest you're going to get to Charlotte winning the fucking title is what you saw on Raw. You ain't getting it here, brother. <laughs> I wonder if Nikki will go up to John and ask him to politic for her to continue to hold the title. You know, that's the shit that's been going on any fucking ways. I mean, come on. She's improved a lot as performer. She magically grew boobs like Stephanie did. She went to the same melon farm, if you will. But at the end of the day, we all know damn good and well why Nikki Bella is the longest reigning Divas champion of all time. It's one because they wanted somebody to get AJ Lee off of the books as quickly as possible because that's how petty this fucking company is. And two is about who Nikki Bella screws, point blank, period. I'd be stunned though if Charlotte doesn't win the bell. And frankly, I'm just perfectly fine with that. Uh, in terms of the tag title match between the Dudleys and New Day, I know that it would create a great moment and you get a great pop. And it would be something interesting to see the Dudley boys come back and win the tag team titles. But honestly, these guys just came back on the Raw after SummerSlam. Uh, you already have Sting possibly winning the world title on this show. Do we need a sent second kind of vintage championship pop? Do we need a second old-timers pop, if you will? A second Legends pop on this show? No, I don't really think we do. I think you actually accomplish more out of this match if you have the New Day win somehow, and then maybe all three of them end up going through a table. That way the Dudleys get to do what the Dudleys do, and the people are happy about that. And the New Day gets to do what the New Day does, and the people will either be happy or upset about that, and then they want the Dudleys to really get one over on the New Day come the next time around. I wouldn't change the tag titles here. I want to keep them on the New Day. I, will, I want to save that for another show down the road. You know, because you're already probably going to change the Divas title. You may or may not change the IC title. I don't think they will. You're going to change at least the world title or U.S. title, one of them, if not both of them. You don't need a show that's nothing but title changes. Because now you head into this, the predictable thing to do would be the Dudleys are getting a title shot against the New Day, one of the greatest tag teams in WWE history. They're going to get the belts. So you want to surprise the people a little bit and leave that little bit of an element of spontaneity of I don't know exactly what's going to happen even if I think I do. And that's personally to me what I would do here. Because I want to get as much mileage as I, out of this show as I can. And I want to make sure I pick and choose my spots of what to do appropriately. I don't want to basically blow my entire wad in one night. And I think if you have Sting win the world title plus the Dudleys win the tag titles, you're probably blowing your wad in one night unnecessarily so. And then we ultimately get to uh, Seth Rollins' big night. Two big title matches against two huge names. First defending the U.S. title against John Cena, and the second match where he's defending the WWE World Heavyweight Championship against Sting. And I'll start off with the U.S. title match in Cena. Now, the way that they have presented this heading into the show is even though John Cena and Rollins is really the secondary feud in all of this. It's really about Rollins versus Sting, especially because you're going to incorporate God into it. There's still that part of me that has concern about whether or not they're going to main event the U.S. title on this show. If you were going to give Sting a fucking world title shot on a pay-per-view like Night of Champions, it must main event. It's not about match quality. It's not about all this other bullshit. Obviously, if you thought John Cena was that big of a monster draw for this event, then just book him in the fucking world title match, and then you can have it main event, and then have Cena win title 16, and let's get it fucking over with. But the WWE didn't. They haven't chased in the U.S. title. Meaning that they didn't feel it was right for him to go after the world title, meaning in this case they didn't feel it was right for him to fucking go out there and main event this show. Now, in terms of 
who should win that match between Cena and Rollins. If you're positioning Rollins to lose the world title, do you really want to go that far and have him lose the U.S. title as well? They may, but I don't think they should here. I think somehow, some way, they've got to figure out a way to have him retain this U.S. title. Because, again, if you put that title right back on Cena, what have you really accomplished? Having Cena drop the strap to Rollins just to sit there and give it right back to Cena seems kind of pointless and pretty much like every other thing that is a waste of time involving John Cena in today's WWE. Furthermore, then you still run up against the major issue and problem of if John Cena is your United States champion, who the fuck does he wrestle? And who the fuck actually is taken seriously as a threat to beat him? I think ultimately, at the end of the day, you've got to have Rollins somehow, some way, walk out with the U.S. title. He's got to hold it at this point. Because I don't think it's a good idea to sit there and have him lose both belts in one night. Because again, when we talk about you know blowing your wad... Why not have Rollins lose that U.S. title to another challenger further on down the road? You know, you have a lot of different directions in a way you could go with that. So why why waste it here and why waste on Cena? Cena doesn't fucking need it. In fact, the only thing Cena needs to do is not win on Sunday. And then we get to the WWE World Heavyweight Championship and a match that to me is loaded with possibilities of what you can do. More so than what you would usually get out of a main event title match at a pay-per-view. I think you really have all types of possibilities here. And it's going to be really hard for the WWE to screw this up. Now, granted, they could defy the odds, as they so often do. Um, but this is going to be really, really hard to screw up. Because you have so many different options of what you could do in the finish. And ultimately, it's going to come down to the finish. Let's face it. You know, Rollins might be able to carry Sting to a decent match, but we're not expecting a mega blockbuster here. But that's not what this match is about. It's all about that finish. And that's why this needs to main event. Because you need to have some type of big climactic ending to this match, some big climactic ending to this show. Uh, what are the options you could potentially do that would work, that would make some sense? You could just have Seth Rollins retain. If you're trying to sit there and measure him against Triple H and you're going there and you're having Sting say that Seth Rollins is half the man of Triple H, then what better way to validate Seth Rollins than by having him beat the icon Sting? The same thing Triple H did, but this time Seth Rollins did it while not at WrestleMania. He did it for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. And now if you really want to blast off into a battle of who's better and who's got the bigger stick, you know, I'll probably side with Triple H, uh, then have Seth Rollins win and then when you break off him and Triple H, now it's a question of who's really going to win. And Seth Rollins could go toe-to-toe -to -toe and be like, look, dude, I won this title at WrestleMania. I beat John Cena for both the world and U.S. title. I sat there and beat Sting for the title at Night of Champions and retained successfully with no help, no bullshit, no anything. That's an option. I don't think it's a very likely option, but it's an option. You've also got the Triple H path. Where Seth Rollins is saying his shit about Triple H and Sting is saying what he's saying about Seth Rollins, comparing him to Triple H and how he doesn't measure up. And maybe Triple H, after all of the tension that's kind of been simmering under the surface, you could have him come out, get involved in the match, and fuck over Seth Rollins. And if you really want to launch off into Triple H and Seth Rollins and build towards a big match between those two, perhaps the Survivor Series, this would be the place to go. That's where it needs to go anyways. So why not kick it off right here? So not only could you get that big, huge nostalgia pop at the end of the night with Sting winning the title, you're also launching off into a very, very um, interesting line of business that carries on outside of that with Triple H and Seth Rollins. And then you have the element of Sting being the champion, but him and Triple H and this and that and everything else, it could make it interesting. You could also have Triple H sit there and fuck over Seth Rollins and help Sting win the title because Triple H wants to go after the world title. My God, he's already beat Sting at WrestleMania. He's a 13-time world champion. You see Cena at 15. You would think somebody like a Triple H, both real life and character, from an ego standpoint, would sit there and say, I'm fucking better than you. I'm not that far away. I've still got life left in my body. Let me go see if I can tie Ric Flair first. And that's what the fuck you should do. Praise God. Just imagine. Sting versus Seth Rollins here at Night of Champions. Maybe at Survivor Series. It's Sting versus Triple H. 
for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. You could even, in theory, put that belt around Triple H. Have him carry that even all the way to WrestleMania or at least to the Royal Rumble. You know, do something again. You could follow it up with him and Seth Rollins. You could do something there where Triple H, you know, screws over Seth Rollins, but Triple H sits there and faces Sting and he loses to Sting and now Seth Rollins rubs it in his fucking face all the time and now they've got a real reason to freaking go at it. You could have Brock Lesnar come out and fucking interfere in this match and screw over Seth Rollins because he's mad about what happened at Battleground. And you could just do it because you just want to fucking do it with Brock Lesnar. You don't really need a whole lot of other rhyme or reason here. Or you could send him in as a hired mercenary for Triple H to do the job to get the belt off of Seth Rollins. That's another possibility. Uh, yet another possibility is you could sit there, if we want to go for a big, huge, impactful, holy shit, did you see that type of nostalgia pop, imagine if it's Sting and Seth Rollins, and then out comes Triple H to fuck shit up, and then, bam, the electricity as The Rock comes out, and he rock bottoms Triple H, he rock bottoms Seth Rollins, and Sting wins the title, and bam! Now you don't have to quite go to Triple H and Seth Rollins just yet. You can delay that off just a little bit, even though you know eventually you're going to get there. You've potentially planted the seed for Triple H to go after Sting and the WWE World Heavyweight Championship while also setting the table for Triple H versus The Rock at WrestleMania 32, which is where you know you're wanting to go any damn ways, which is understandable. I mean, there's so much you could do. Just think about it. There's so many possibilities. The, the fact of the matter is, it's going to be really hard to me to sit there and have them screw this up. If you do a ref bump, that's great. Then make sure there's a title change. If you do a ref bump, then great. Make sure you give us a reason to actually do the ref bump and not some stupid crap. Let's hope there's no finish like there was at SummerSlam because, my God, how dumb and awful that was for all parties involved. Let's hope... They've had time to plan. They've had time to prepare. Let's hope they can book their way out of a paper bag with this finish. I think any of the options I provided work. I think any of the options I provided potentially makes sense. So WWE, I've given you a lot of potential platforms to go off of here that will fucking work. And it seems like sometimes in the past when you've done something that I've suggested you do and somehow magically you almost do it exactly how I say you should do it, it seems to work pretty well. Consider it this time. The only thing I really give a fuck about, though, honestly, is that at the end of the night, that Sting will be the new WWE World Heavyweight Champion. And that even brings in the possibility of a Sheamus cashing in right away, oh God, or a Sheamus cashing in down the road. Again, the possibilities are endless. And if you want to sit there, and I can't believe I'm suggesting this, you want to build Sheamus up a little bit and at the same time keep Cena away from a title and give him something to do, you might have to go with John Cena versus Sheamus for the time being. Again, by having Rollins retain the U.S. title and Sting winning the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, I think it provides the most options and the most beneficial opportunities all around for the WWE. So hopefully they don't do the exact fucking opposite because they're stupid and have Cena win the U.S. title because they have a hard-on for him, and then Sting doesn't win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship because they're stupid, and then everybody's like, why the fuck did I waste three hours of my time watching this? I could have watched Seattle versus Green Bay on Sunday Night Football.